Okay, so we're going to take a look at some different philosophical theories of truth. And yes, there are different ones. Um, in different situations in real life, we seem to believe that truth means different things and is established in different ways. So truth may be what corresponds with what's out there in the world. That's a very common understanding of truth. Um, it could be what fits with our other beliefs and meanings. Or it can be what gets us what we want. Right? And if you take a look at the way that you use the, the, the term truth and the concept of truth, you may see this to be true. It's kind of fluid in the sense we use it in uh, different circumstances to describe different um, criteria, for instance. Now, for our class, we're going to take a look at three specific theories of truth. The first is known as correspondence, and that's the most commonplace understanding of what it means for an idea or a statement to be true. And next we'll look at coherence, the coherence theory of truth. And last we'll look at uh, the pragmatic theory of truth. So correspondence theory of truth definition is it's a proposition, which is a sentential or sentence based object of belief. A proposition is true if and only if it corresponds to features of the actual objective world as it is in itself. So truth is a property of statements about reality or ideas about reality. Again, this is our most common understanding of what it means for a sentence or a proposition to be true. And this theory of truth connects most directly with the idea that there actually is an objective world as it is in itself, that's known as metaphysical realism, and that we can therefore know it. And under this theory, truth is seen as a mental content to objective world relation. So the objective world out there is, in fact, a certain way, and your idea about it is true insofar as it matches up or corresponds with that objective world or that feature of the objective world. So, for instance, you could say, the pen is on the table, right? This belief can be considered true insofar as your sensations of the pen being on the table correspond to conditions in the outside world. Back for a second. Makes sense, right? If I say the pen is on the table, it is true insofar as I can see, hear, smell, feel, the pen on the table, then my mental content matches up with the objective features of reality as it is in itself. But there are some problems with the correspondence theory. It's more like limitations. So, for instance, what about hypothetical propositions that are true? Um, a hypothetical proposition would go like this. If I... If I um, complete all of my assignments and do well on my tests, then I can get an A in this class. That doesn't have the same mental content to objective world relation as, say, the pen is on the table is. That's a different kind of proposition. So you can, what does it correspond to that's actually out there in the world? Do you see? Or what about moral truths or falsity? What if you say um, more, uh, murder is morally wrong, right? Where can, how does that, and that's a true statement, you claim. How does, what does that match up to in the objective world? In the objective world, you can see murder causes pain, murder causes harm. But you can't find the truth or falsity of the statement that murder is morally wrong out there in the objective world. So correspondence theory um, does, doesn't accommodate moral statements or mathematical truths, 
for that instance, for that matter. Um, you can say 12 divided by 3 is 4, but you can't see numbers out in the objective world. You can see units, right, that numbers stand for, but we're talking about something different here. How about logical truths? To what empirically verifiable entities do these sorts of propositions actually refer such that correspondence theory is going to work for us in all of these cases? And these are limitations of the correspondence theory of truth. Also, some claim that we don't have mind-independent access to reality, which is required if we're to compare our thoughts with reality in itself. So essentially, we'd be comparing our thoughts about reality with our thoughts about reality, right? So if you remember Barclay, for instance, says we don't have mind-independent access to reality. We just have access to our represent mental representations of reality. So again, th this is a massive limitation of correspondence theory of truth. And what about truths of a personal nature? I feel, um, if you say, I feel confused. That could be true or false, but as of yet, we don't have any um, way of empirically verifying or falsifying something that is strictly personal. And what about this proposition? The correspondence theory of truth is true, which is underlying the correspondence of theory, theory of truth, correct? That it's true, but to what out there in the objective world does that sentence correspond with such that we could verify it. Do you understand? So those are all limitations of the correspondence theory. This brings us to the coherence theory of truth. And before I go any further, um, I wanted to make this very clear. These theories of truth, cor uh, correspondence, coherence, and pragma uh, pragmatic, these are best understood as complementary theories of truth as opposed to competing and exclusive theories of truth. Right. If you try to understand one of them as the sole theory of truth, you're going to be leaving a lot out. So um, again, just try to see these as, as complements as opposed to um, competition. Okay, back. Coherence theory of truth. The truth of any true proposition or belief consists in its coherence with some specified set of propositions or beliefs. Right. So this theory of truth connects most directly with the idea that reality is fundamentally mental, right, which is known as metaphysical or subjective idealism. If there is an objective world as it is in itself, we can't really know it directly. We can only know our mental representations of it. So you can see how coherence theory of truth is trying to accommodate that problem, that limitation of correspondence theory of truth. Right? I think it was the second bullet point prior. Kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. That's how you should look at coherence theory of truth. And under this theory, truth is seen as a mental content to mental content relation, as opposed to mental content to objective feature of the outside world relation. So here's a for instance, using the pen again. Um, say there's, here's our proposition. The pen is on the ground. Right? So this is a true statement insofar as you has a, have a specified set of propositions which cohere with one another. Right? I know this is very bizarre, but it's, it's um, like I said, it's an answer to, it's, it's an expansion of our true theories in order to account um, for our ability to say that something is true or false that we can't have any real empirical evidence about, or at least as of yet, right? which correspondence theory requires. So the pen is on the ground. 
you can say, oh, well, I heard the pen hitting the ground and the person sitting at the desk, desk next to me looked up and heard that as well. And I can sense that the pen's no longer where I thought I left it. So since all of these beliefs cohere with one another, you could say that the pen is on the ground is true. Again, I know that sounds a little bizarre, but here's an, um, here's a slightly better example. So for instance, we say that it's the case that there are black holes out in space. We can't see black holes directly, but the idea of their existence, it coheres with other cosmological ideas that we have. Right, so we know that matter heat, um, matter drawn into the center of a spiral heats up, and at certain temperatures, this is going to show on X-rays, and these X-rays can be seen by space telescopes. So we theorize that there are these things called black holes, and that their existence is real. That the sentence "there are black holes" is true. Right, but it's true in a coherence sense of truth as opposed to correspondence sense of truth. <coughs> Excuse me. Problems with the coherence theory. If truth consists only in the relation of some proposition or belief to others in that kind of system, then you're committed to a radical idealism regarded regarding the objective world. And um, the specification problem. Since both a particular proposition or belief and its negation can individually cohere with at least one set of propositions or beliefs, it follows that contradictory propositions and beliefs can be shown to be true as well. And what? The, let me give you an example using the pen, right? So we'll go back. The specification problem um, with the coherence theory of truth goes like this. You're trying to say, is this true or not? The pen is on the ground. Well, if you heard it hitting the ground, somebody else heard it hitting the ground, and you can sense it no longer is where you thought you left it, then the pen is on the ground, right? But the specification problem says, you know, you can negate all of these, including the claim itself and you'll still have consistency but are you going to have truth so you could say hey the pen is not on the ground i did not hear the pen hitting the ground nobody else heard the pen hitting the ground i don't sense the pen is no longer where i thought i left it in other words the pen is still where i left it hence the pen is not on the ground all that's going to work together the coherence theory of truth is going to say, well, then it can be true. But what if it's not true? What are the things on the ground? I hope that made sense. Back. So in other words, it leaves open the possibility that although all of our beliefs in a specified set could support each other, they could in fact be false. It could be an echo chamber of falsity. Last, we have the pragmatic theory of truth. And that states that a proposition is true if and only if the belief in that proposition is pragmatic or if it's useful in a certain way. And this theory takes the individual subjective life into account. Again, I'm going to remind you, it is really best and most fruitful to see these theories of truth as complementary as opposed to contradictory. Right. And the idea is, is more that consider your subject matter and use the one that is um, most appropriate. OK, let's continue. So a proposition or belief is true if it allows you to interact effectively and efficiently with the universe, if it works. A true idea has what's known as cash value in experiential terms. We don't need complete verification that the idea matched up exactly with reality. We only need to show that the consequences of holding the idea will have practical 
value. Now, I, I, this is a quick aside. I, I really don't care for the phrase, um, this is my truth, right? But this, it kind of smacks of this theory, don't you think? If, if I'm going to do a little bit of, um, if I'm going to be generous with that saying, I'm speaking my truth. It, that kind of that notion kind of accords with the pragmatic theory of truth. Know what I mean? So, here's a for instance. Person A may believe that making a lot of money is the of the utmost importance. So to person A, the proposition earning a lot of money is the most important aspect of life is true. And this belief will pragmatically guide A's actions in life. Notice the subjectivity here. Person B may attach little significance to money, instead think that having good friends and close family bonds is of the utmost importance. So to B, the proposition having friends and family is the most important aspect of life is true, and this belief will pragmatically guide B's actions in life. And, of course, we have to take a look at the problems with the pragmatic theory. Pragmatic theory ignores the common meaning of truth. Consider the following two propositions. It is true that the pen is on the ground, and it is useful to believe that the pen is on the ground. According to the pragmatic theory of truth, these two statements would have the same meaning when clearly they do not. And also, a belief may work and be entirely false with regard to the common meaning of truth. For instance, the belief in Santa Claus works quite well for many children for the explanation of why there are a bunch of presents under the tree and why they should behave throughout the year. So that's it for um, Theories of Truth 101. I'll remind you one more time. Most useful and best understood as complementary as opposed to um, exclusive, com strictly competing. You know, the problems cited with one theory help the, um, help the next theory establish itself or help guide people to um, what the newest theory needs to account for, right? So again, complementary as opposed to exclusive.